Yo guys, what is up? It is Nick. We are going to be doing the day one breakdown. Sorry it's a little bit late. I slept in a little bit long. I was up pretty late last night uh, watching the games and then doing a couple of things afterwards. But we will be going through the brackets today. As you can see, not doing too bad uh, in the brackets. Last three are probably my most serious ones and we are 12 out of the 16 games so far. Only lost one uh, team that was really important to the whole, to my whole bracket, which was Seton Hall. Uh, other than that, we did pretty well. And other than the, um, I believe it's the, is it the Midwest region? If we totally ditch the Midwest region, if why isn't my computer loading so slow? There we go. If you ditch the Midwest region, I was perfect, 100% perfect. If you ditch the Midwest region, I got Gonzaga. Wrong, I got Utah wrong, I got Arkansas Little Rock wrong, and I got Butler wrong. I got, I went two for six in the Midwest region. If you ditch the Midwest region, I went two for two in the West, I went four for two in the South, and I went four for two in the East. Providence winning on that last second shot. Um, but as bad as 12 for 16 seems, I'm in the top 74%, so not half bad. Uh, currently in rank 3 millionth, um, but it really doesn't matter. Like I said in my little bracket strategy, all you got to do is uh, make sure you get your Final Four and uh, National Championship set, and then go ahead and pick some upsets and do all that different junk. But today, obviously, is my bigger day. i uh, got tons of upsets, got my important teams playing, um, as well as all of that. I'll go over that in a little bit um, a detail later, but let's start out with... Um, I'm not going to go in order of the games played. Uh, we're just going to go in order on the bracket. So let's start out. Kansas and Austin P. Austin P. played per... I'm not going to go too in-depth on the number one seeds that should have won. I'll go a little bit more and eat North Carolina. But other than that, um, Kansas, Austin P. Austin P. played well at the beginning. Uh, and then they made a nice little run in the second half. Um, let me be, let me say this. I did have all four games playing at once on my TVs and laptops, but let me say that I didn't get a full detailed look at all of the games. Uh, if you did that, you're impressive. Um, because I, I had one game up on the big screen and obviously that was the game that I was focusing the most on. Uh, so Kansas, Austin P. Austin P. you know, made a run in the second half. I believe got it down to 15. Um, and then Kansas took a timeout and then retook the lead by about 25, so they pretty much handled Austin P. It was a little bit close at the beginning, but uh, nothing too uh, big to talk about there. Uh, no concerns with Kansas or anything like that after that game. Uh, moving on, Colorado and UConn uh, was the best game of the day before, probably the best game of the day um, that opened the day, I guess. Um, UConn came back from a nine-point halftime deficit. Uh, they almost threw that game away. Uh, Sterling Gibbs had two turnovers near the end of the game. Uh, very concerning, uh, but they have had problems holding on to the lead all year, uh, so it didn't really surprise me uh, that they messed around and almost lost that game. Um, I don't like them against Kansas if they play like they did yesterday because that first half was ugly. And um, the second half was really good for about 15 minutes. The last five minutes, they slowed down. They had some issues, and um, it, it wasn't great. And Colorado's not a great team. Um, if Scott's really not going, then they're not going very well. Uh, so, so UConn, you know, gets out of there with a win over Colorado, now faces Kansas. But, you know, Kevin Ollie 7-0 and in the tournament. Who knows what the heck UConn will do to Kansas um, no one expected UConn to, to do what they did in, what was it, two years ago. So who knows what they'll do to Kansas, if they'll pull the upset or not. Uh, moving on, we've got uh, Arizona-Wichita State, pretty much the common upset pick. Though a lot of people had Arizona. There were a couple people that had Arizona, like not just random people, like people who knew basketball had Arizona in their Elite Eight or, or Sweet 16. And I was like, there is no way. I think Vanderbilt would have beat Arizona. Wichita State just wanted that game more. Uh, they out-muscled, they out-hustled, all the cliches that you can say. They did them. Um, they just, they worked harder than Arizona in that game. They wanted it more. Arizona got dominated pretty much. They got dominated as much as he can and only lose by 10. Um, 
but they didn't they didn't look good. The most exciting thing for Arizona was Sean Miller sweating like a like he was in the Sahara Desert in on in a sweater because that dude that dude was drenched by like halfway through the first half. Homie was sweating through his sweating through his uh his dress shirt. It was it was it was gross. You had to see the picture. Go on Twitter and just look up Sean uh, Sean Miller's T-shirt or or Sean Miller's shirt. I think is what it's under. There's just a ton of different accounts now um, because people are out of control with these parody accounts. But um, you'll be able to find it if you didn't get to see it. Uh, moving on to Miami Buffalo. Buffalo had Miami for the longest time. Miami didn't play well. Um, Sheldon McClellan early, I believe, had three travels. Uh, which is horrible. Um, and Buffalo, I believe Miami went to the halftime with a was it a one point lead or like it was it was a single digit lead. It was a lower single digit lead. I forget exactly what it was. And I was getting a little bit worried, you know, earlier that damn with Miami from my from losing to Wichita State to actually moving them to the Elite Eight. So I was feeling that was or to the Sweet Sixteen, and that was the first time I felt a little bit of uh, ooh, this could get this could get bad for me. Um, but Miami, though, played well in the second half. They did build themselves a nice lead and then kind of gave it back to Buffalo. Um, for some reason, they wouldn't guard Bearden. All they had to do was stop him, and they probably could have put this game away a lot earlier. But um, they came out with a win. That's really all that matters. Wasn't too all impressed, but they did play decently. They played much better in the second half, um, but they didn't stop Bearden, which was a horrible plan. And... So they were so Buffalo was able to keep the game a little bit closer than it actually was. They kind of kept them at bay um, throughout the throughout the second half. Miami did a pretty good job of that. Um, moving on to North Carolina, Florida Gulf Coast. Uh, Florida Gulf Coast was only down one at halftime, and I wasn't really all that surprised because North Carolina multiple times this year in multiple losses, even some wins, especially the one against Notre Dame and South Bend. They just look disinterested in the game. Like, they don't want to be there. They don't want to play it. They, they they know they're better than the other team. They just want to go out there and, you know, follow the motion and, and just get the W. And, you know, when the other team wants it bad and, and you, you, you're just kind of there, you're just expecting to show up and win, you're... It, it has given them trouble all year. And it was one of the things that I thought about when I picked them. I'll go all the way to the national championship. Is that sometimes they just look they just look 100% disinterested. They just don't look like they like they want to play basketball. They don't hustle for any rebounds. They don't hustle to get balls. Um, I think North Carolina is probably the second best team in the country behind Kansas if they want to play. I would say half of North Carolina's losses for part of the game they just look disinterested. They just don't look like they want to be there. They don't look like they want to win. They just look like they should show up and be able to win off a of talent. It really is that simple, um, and and it's one thing that bugs me with North Carolina this year um, because they are so good. They they could have easily been the number one seed and had a much better record, number one overall seed. Um, but but that loss to Notre Dame, they that I've never seen anything like that. They just looked they looked disinterested in that game for like thirty five minutes. Now they held the lead for most of it somehow, but. The last five, the last five ten minutes, they just didn't look like they wanted to be there. They didn't die for any balls. They just watched Notre Dame get all of them, and they just looked like they were having no fun. They just did not want to play basketball. Uh, but that's enough about North Carolina. Hopefully, they get it together and can help me out. Uh, probably the game of the day, um, though the Arkansas Little Rock Purdue game was pretty good. Um, I think this was the best one. Uh, Providence USC, Providence pulling out the one point win and helping me not be 11 out of 16. 12 out of 16 is not bad, just simply because of how I missed. We'll we'll, we'll see it and we'll see it here. But these top brackets still looking good, and I still feel pretty good about having them 100% correctly. Um, Hawaii, Cal, and uh, Michigan, Notre Dame are probably the only ones that I really feel. Not so confident about, I guess, West Virginia, Stephen F. Austin, uh, just because I like Stephen F. Austin, but I, I'm still feeling good about West Virginia. Um, but that Providence-USC game, the funniest thing that I saw about that game is um, when Nick Young went to USC, if you didn't know that, and uh, that shot that he shot when he was on the Lakers where he shoots that three and then he puts his hands up 
like he made it and then realized it came out. There's like they t- someone edited the bra- the backboard to be a bracket and had the tro and it, c- it comes off perfectly um, to where it was like it was moving on. The Trojans were moving on to play North Carolina and then it kind of falls out. It, it's funny you have to probably see it. Me explaining it's probably not that good. Um, but USC had that game one. Um, how they let Chris Dunn take that one three he did to close the game or to 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 tighten the score, and then how North, how USC misses two front ends of a one and one, and I believe they missed another free throw down the stretch. How you miss those? You make one of those, and you don't lose the game in in regular in uh in the regular time. Like I I don't even I don't get it. USC, you miss three free throws, and then you completely lose your assignment. Uh, Bullock just gets wide open, and then he. It's like he got nervous. He didn't go straight up with the ball. He kind of he kind of caught it and then gathered himself and then made sure he got up there and laid it in. It was like he was nervous because I, I thought when he kind of regathered himself to go back up, he was going to get blocked because he had it wide open if he went up immediately. There was going to be no contestion. There was there was very little of a contest uh, when he went up, but um, Providence ekes out the win there. I thought for sure they were going to lose. They went down four, and then, and then they took two horrible possessions. They took two garbage possessions where Chris Dunn jacked up some crappy shots, um, and that, that was it. I, I don't really have much to say. That game was, though, really good, but it was really horrible at the same time. Moving on to uh, Indiana Chattanooga. Chattanooga hung around for a while. They hung around for uh, first... 20 men 25 minutes they were they were in the game uh, and then indiana just you know indiana's the better team so they pulled away from chattanooga i'm happy i didn't pick that upset because now that i looked at chattanooga in not in person but live they weren't as good as i was thinking in my head so happy i picked indiana moving on to kentucky stony brook the one issue this win isn't as impressive to me as it is to some people but stony brook's best player is uh is uh, Warney, and he's a big man in Kentucky. You know that that's their skill on defense, not necessarily on offense. Ulysses and Murray and Briscoe are their more offensive, um, it's where they're the best on offense. But on defense, they're, they're the best inside the paint. And Warney struggled through that first half. Actually, they all struggled, but Warney, being their best player, you know, had to get some points. Had to you know, um, impose as well, do some, do some things, but he, he didn't play too well, uh, obviously, it's hard to play too well when you're playing, like, one on three in the paint every time, but, uh, Stony Brook, eh, not too impressed with, with them, um, I'm not, I'm still not really sure how impressive that win by Kentucky was, because Stony Brook was, the, the blocks were really impressive for Kentucky, but I, I don't really know how good Stony Brook is, so I'm not really sure how impressive the win is, nor not not hating on Kentucky. I'll say that I don't really know how good Miami is, um, in, in tournament play. I guess we know they're all good teams. They made the tournament. They beat teams. They're good. Okay, but I mean, like, I don't know how far Kentucky and Miami can go, uh, just because I don't really know how good Buffalo and Stony Brook really are, like. Are, are they really upper echelon mid-majors, or are they just kind of... Stony Brook was just a bad matchup. They just got a bad matchup uh, against Kentucky. Kentucky is just, one thing, they're just a better team. But two, Stony Brook just, I don't think they ever had a chance to pull this upset. Ever. Ever. I don't think there was a chance in the world that they had to pull this upset over Kentucky. Um, but enough about that. We get Kentucky, Indiana in the Sweet 16 on Saturday. Uh, should be an interesting game. Yogi Farrell versus Tyler Eulis. Kentucky should win the game, but I think, you know, obviously I picked Indiana. Um, but should be an interesting game. Uh, the, the, the biggest thing will probably be pros looking at Eulis versus Farrell. Um, I don't know. People act like Yogi Farrell's been in college forever. It doesn't really seem like that. There's only a few people right now in college that feel like they've been there forever. Wiltshire for, for Gonzaga. Um... Oh, I gotta think of this. One. Um, Perry Ellis for Kansas. Those two guys feel like they've been there forever. Brian Archie Diacono for Villanova. He feels like he's been there forever. Denzel Valentine feels like he's been there forever. Um, 
Is that it? Yeah, I think I think that's about it. But those four people, those four guys feel like they've been there for <laughs> forever. Um, I guess Caleb Tarzuski kind of feels like he's been there forever. Ron Baker and Fred Ryan Fleet kind of feel like they've been for, there forever, but they, they, they really, not not too much. Um, okay, but let's move on to the bottom bracket where I really did horribly, horribly. Hampton hung around with Virginia because Virginia, like my biggest concern with Virginia, can't score very well. So in that first half, it was like 20 to 16 for the longest time because neither team could score because Virginia plays such good defense. And then other than Malcolm Brogdon, they really don't score in the offensive end. But then they finally got it together and blew Hampton out. Um, but that game was closer longer than it really should have been. I think Hampton Hampton is the second worst 16 seed behind Holy Cross. I think Holy Cross is definitely the worst, worst team in the tournament. Um, but I don't really have anything to talk about Virginia and Hampton other than Virginia finally got its crap together in the last, like, 25 minutes and took control. Uh, Texas Tech Butler, really disappointed in Texas Tech. They had the game close, and then they couldn't play defense. They, they gave up a ridiculous amount of threes. They couldn't stop Kellen Dunham, which is so stupid. You know him and Roosevelt Jones want to score. Roosevelt Jones feels like he's been in college forever. Um, you know they're the two they want to score. Just stop Kellen, er, Kellen Dunham. Um, and Todrick Gotcher didn't, they just didn't, Dex Tech just didn't play good, and they really played bad down the stretch, um, and so that, that, I think that was my first, that was my first loss of the day, was, uh, Texas Tech Butler, um, and, and that one, that one I wasn't too concerned, losing an 8-9 is really how most people who know what they're doing lose their first game as an 8-9, because the hell, those are just toss-ups at this point, like, you don't really know who's going to win, though, so, yeah, it's just some, it's just a bunch of random, let's hope this team wins, um, sometimes, like, the UConn matchup, I think UConn was better in Colorado, and Providence was better in USC, even those games were a lot closer than they should have been, um, those were still kind of toss-up games in the end, moving on to, oh, Purdue, 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 this was some depressing, depressing, basketball watching experience watching Purdue for the last five minutes of the regu of regulation and then the five and then the 10 minutes in overtime sweet mother Purdue you could not have played that any worse how you even made it to the second overtime blows my mind your best player is AJ Hammonds give him the ball this is not that complicated we got also I want to say that the commentator, really, you're doing an NCAA tournament game of a pretty good team, a team that's been good all year in Purdue, and you don't know how to say Rayfeld Davis? Really? This just bothered me. You don't know how to say Rayfeld Davis. You're really going to call him Raphael? And then your partner's not going to correct you? Can we can we just take a moment for that? But Rayfeld Davis, not that hard. And it it's not really even spelled like Raphael. It, it's got kind of a weird spelling um i i believe if i'm correct uh but it, it's ray fell and i really the dude's been in college for like three years so the fact that that commentator doesn't know that his name is ray fell davis blows my mind um but moving on to the game purdue for the last 15 minutes it was an embarrassment like they didn't belong in the tournament for that last 15 minutes uh it was a joke um, they didn't want to play defense, it was like they didn't, they were just disinterested, they just wanted that game to be over, whether they won or lost, they just looked extremely disinterested, and they didn't want to play basketball, and they just played some crap offense, they just had G G Matthias dribble the ball around, and then jack up a crappy shot that he didn't hit, okay, one thing, there was three points scored in that first overtime, three Five minutes, you each put up three points. Are you kidding me? You both suck. Like, like I'm feeling good about Iowa State against Arkansas Little Rock, because Arkansas Little Rock was some hot garbage, but Purdue was just even hotter garbage, and uh, the, both of those teams were just some garbage. Uh, I, I don't even know what to say about Purdue. I think everything has been said about them. That was just pathetic. Matt Painter, that was just a joke. Like, what are you doing? 
what are you doing with your offense? Let's just dribble the ball around with Matthias and then chuck up shots instead of running an offense and giving it to Hammonds and giving it and maybe putting in Haas or, or Swanigan and pulling through those three guys. Play through your big men, the guys that got you there. That game is a frustrating one to lose. It really is. That That is probably the most frustrating game to lose of the whole tournament so far. You Really, because in eight and nines, you really can't complain when you lose those. And, and I have to think that that is the most, that's the most annoying loss of the whole entire tournament that you can have if you picked Purdue. It's, it's just annoying that they played that badly. But let's move on, Iowa State, Iona. Iowa State got off to an extremely hot start. This is pretty much all I have to say about this game. They got off to a really hot start and then just kept the lead at roughly somewhere between 8 and 20 points the rest of the game. There, there wasn't much to it. Iona made some really nice runs, but they really just got cut off at 6 or 8. I think they got to 6 once, and then Iowa State ballooned it back out. Uh, but Iowa State went through some droughts, but I, I, I believe they should be fine against Arkansas Little Rock, and I, I feel good about moving them to the Sweet 16. Um, hopefully they'll they'll sit down, go to the drawing board, get, the, get their offense a little bit more in sync, uh, for the next matchup against Arkansas Little Rock. There were a couple times where they were disjointed or they wouldn't give Niang a touch. Uh, so I'd like to see them kind of roll through some couple of things and um, smooth the offense out a little bit. Oh, these two games. Seton Hall, Gonzaga, and Utah, Fresno State. I don't feel bad about picking who I picked. Um, let's go with Utah, Fresno State first because I got some thoughts on Seton Hall, Gonzaga. Okay. Fresno State could not have played more hot trash in the first half. 22 points. They had 11 points through, like, 14 minutes of the first half. Like, the hell were they doing? And they got out-rebounded 24-8 to in the first half. Like, what on earth was Fresno State doing? And then I, I tweeted it out. I said, Fresno State's going to gonna make a huge comeback, and then they're going to break my heart. And that's exactly what they did. They came back and took the lead. Was it, was it 51-50? And then they proceeded to play like some hot trash and, and lose the game. Um, wasn't really too impressed with Utah because Fresno State just played like some hot garbage. So I wasn't really impressed with the Utah win, nor was I really impressed with the Gonzaga win. Though they beat Seton Hall by 16, Kevin Willard is the biggest moron in the tournament so far. He is worse than Matt Painter. He's worse than Matt Painter. The fact that he couldn't deduce from how his team was playing in that first half that he needed to give Isaiah Whitehead and, and uh, Carrington and Gordon a breather blows my mind. They didn't get a breather in the first half. This moron just kept playing them, and their play suffered. And Isaiah Whitehead ended up playing like 35 minutes. If it would have been a close game, he probably would have played closer to 37, 38 minutes, uh, which just is crazy. The dude was taking oxygen, and the dude was struggling to do simple stuff. Like, he, he was struggling to just dribble the ball up the court. He got it stolen twice. He got it... Um, he get, there, there was one where he... He walked it up. He walked it up extremely slow one time. Like it was like seven seconds before he crossed half court. There was one time when Enzi stepped over the line. The team just wasn't focused. You needed to give them a breather, let them calm down. Um, you had the game within six. They had the game within eight and had literally all the momentum. And then Kevin Willard gets a technical. Like really, you have all the momentum in your favor. Yes, you're giving the ball back to you to uh, Gonzaga, but you're gonna get a technical there. Like, it, it, oh my God, Kevin Willard! It blows my mind how garbage he was of a coach. How garbage the coaching was from the top teams in this area, Purdue and Seton Hall. Like, what on earth are you coaches doing? Like, what drugs are you on? Like, uh. Like it wasn't that hard to coach those games, but they found a way to jack them up. Um, but let's move on to the final two games, which was Baylor-Yale and Duke-North Carolina-Wilmington. Uh, we'll start with the L baylor um, All I've got to say is don't pick ba don't pick against Baylor next year. They're not losing. They're not losing three. They're not getting first round if they're the higher seed and they're not an 8-9 matchup if, or a 7-10. If, if they're a 6 seed or lower or higher, I don't 
it's, it's kind of confusing on how you say that. Six or is it, would it be higher? Because then, you know, you know what I mean. If there are six, five, four, three, or two, or one, don't pick against them. They're not losing three times in a row being the favorite. Uh, next year, I'm picking Baylor, no matter who they play, no matter what, no matter if I love the mid major they're playing. You pick, you just pick Baylor. Uh, but Yale played well. Uh, Malachi Mason goes for 31 and goes, he going 10 for 10 from the free throw line, going like 6 of 6 down the stretch. Dude was a beast. Um, I believe Yale puts him away if Sears and Sherrod don't get those four fouls. They put him away way earlier. Um, but they didn't, so it was a great game. Came down the end. That dude airballed a free throw in the clutch. How do you airball a free throw? I, I don't get it. You play basketball all your life. I could shoot probably a thousand free throws in a row and not airball one. So I don't even, I don't get that. How do you airball a free throw? And he airballed it bad. He barely hit the bottom of the net. Like, what is this dude doing? Um, but Yale pulling out the nice win. Uh, happy about that. Not too, it, it, lower amount of people than I thought picked Yale. Um, the Ivy League always seems to get W's. Harvard, Yale. What is it? Princeton got some wins before I've seen. Dart miss. There are some teams. They get W's. They do. They get W's. But moving on to Duke, UNC Wilmington. Um, UNC Wilmington. I was very impressed. And I was, for a while there, I was like, you know what? I picked these dudes in my first bracket. But um, they, they couldn't pull it out. Um, I still like Duke over Yale. So I'm happy with my Duke-Yale matchup and then my Duke face in Oregon. So... I, I do feel really good about my bracket, and I really do feel good about where it's going. Um, Duke, yeah, I don't really have much to say about the Duke UNC Wilmington game. It was just high octane, high paced, and Duke got fouled a lot. That's about it. UNC Wilmington could not stop fouling. Uh, but that, but that's about it about that game. Um, what time are we at for this video? How long are these recaps going for? It's a 26-minute video. Um, sorry it's a little bit late, like I said, but let's get into the final part. I did not lose a Sweet 16 team. Um, I didn't have too many of them playing yesterday, uh, but Duke survived Iowa State. I, or I lost one Sweet 16 team. Sorry, I lost Eaton Hall. But I, I kept all my Elite 8 teams, um, and then I kept all my Sweet 16 teams except Seton Hall. So I'm, I'm not, I can't complain about how my bracket is looking like i told you guys the big concern is making sure that you get your final four national champion set up how you want it and then kind of fill in pick some upsets around there uh but maryland south dakota state uh i really need maryland to pull out the up to pull out not the upset pull out the win uh and then hawaii cal really doesn't matter obviously i'm losing 10 points but once again not too big of a deal same with temple iowa villanova i need i can't have villanova lose I got them going way too far. I cannot have Villanova lose for a while. Um, then Notre Dame, Michigan. It doesn't really matter. Michigan can lose. Not a big deal. West Virginia, Stephen F. Austin. I need West Virginia to pull that out. I got them in the Elite Eight. I need them to win. Uh, Wisconsin, Pitt. Not too big of a deal. Xavier, I need them to win, but not huge uh, implications if they do lose. Down here, I just want something to go right. Please, Syracuse and Michigan State just win. I need something to go right in this Midwest bracket. Something. Something go right for me. Uh, the Arkansas Little Rock's not bad because then it faces an easier matchup for Iowa State to move on. So I, I am okay with that. I am okay with that. Um, but I need something to go right for me in this bracket. Literally, it probably couldn't have gone worse unless Iowa State gets upset by I Iona and Hampton upsets Virginia. This bracket would have been ridiculous, and it would have been so ugly for me. Uh, over here, my big bracket, I got Oklahoma, my national championship team, tips off at 4. I'll, I'll be tuned into that game. I love watching Buddy Heald, and I'll, I'll, I'm definitely going to be making sure to watch all the games until they, elim they get eliminated or win, um, because I do enjoy, I love watching or, or Oklahoma and Buddy Heald. And I'll get to watch Oregon for, I'll get to really sit down and enjoy an Oregon game um, tonight. Uh, I haven't got to do that too many times this season, so I'll be really pumped to watch that at 7.30. Um, St. Joe, Cincinnati could be one of those uh, great matchups. My boys of Northern Iowa and my boys out of Green Bay, Carrington Love, give me that upset. Give me that upset, boy. I picked I picked two 14-3 matchups. Please don't screw me. The biggest thing that, that the tournament could screw me with is if Green Bay lost and then West Virginia got upset by Stephen F. Austin. I would just, 
I would just throw my hands up in the air and give up. Uh, but guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you all enjoy. Let me know what you guys think of my recap videos. And uh, I'll make sure and definitely bring you one tomorrow. If you guys want me to narrow them down to just do them every round, let me know. Um, but I can definitely, like, obviously, as you can see, 30 minutes. I, I can talk about content for for a while about what happened. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed. Drop a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't. And I will catch you all in my next video. Peace out.